It's not her fault that she broke her leg. It's your fault. You're the professional. You should know better. You should not have made someone who is 400 pounds run one mile. What did you expect to happen? Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on The Biggest Loser. Is it good advice or is it just good entertainment and terrible advice? Well, before we get started, I'd just like to ask that if you would like to see more of these types of videos, be sure to smash that like button so I know to upload more of these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. Now, onto the topic. When it comes to The Biggest Loser, I'm going to break this video down into several different stages. I will be discussing everything from the way they do their workouts to the berating that goes on, the nutrition, the sustainability of the show. And if you would like to skip ahead to one of those particular topics, I will be including timestamps down in the description. So if you don't want to watch the entire video and there's a particular t subject that you would like to listen to, you can go ahead, look in the description at the timestamp and skip ahead to the part that you want. Now, when it comes to The Biggest Loser, not a huge fan of the show, I've only ever watched one season, and the one time that I did watch it, it was horrifying. Basically, the very first episode, what they made them do was a one mile run. And on that one mile run, I remember there was this one girl, I can't remember what her weight was, but she was probably somewhere in the mid 300s to mid 400s. And she wasn't able to make it to the end, or if she did make it to the end, she just made it, and she ended up collapsing on the floor. What happened was they ended up bringing her to the doctor, they did a scan on her, and they found that she had a hairline fracture in her shin. That was the very first day of their entire season. The very first day, they made people that are 500 plus pounds run one mile, and then when the girl got her shin broken, Jillian Michaels, who is one of the people on the show that is responsible for training the contestants, she ended up giving shit to the woman who broke her shin saying see what happens when you're this much overweight and that drove me nuts because it's not her fault that she broke her leg it's your fault you're the professional you should know better you should not have made someone who is 400 pounds run one mile what did you expect to happen that was just the first day from that day on that woman was not able to really work out for the next few weeks so she was only really able to be in the pool and do aquatic exercise with regard to the rest of the workouts that went on throughout the duration of the season the workouts were pretty generic. They were not specified to the individual. It was just whatever one person was doing, every single person in the group was doing. And for me personally, that's a big no-no. For everybody that comes to me, every single program that I write is 100% custom. There's not one program between any of my clients that is exactly the same. Every single person is going to have a program customized based off of the, their particular goals and the results of the assessment. When I do an assessment, it's a three hour assessment. I'll take a look at their posture, their mobility, stability, strength. I'll go through everything, the way they move. When you are writing a program for someone, that is what you should do. As one of my mentors, Paul Check says, if you're not assessing, you're guessing. So if you're just gonna give every single person the exact same routine, it's not gonna be effective. It will be effective for one or two of them, but on a whole, it's not going to be the most effective program that you can give someone. Now, I understand this is not a personal training session that they're doing and that they're being paid for. It's meant for entertainment. They need to do exercises that are going to look good on camera. Still though, you can still write a good program, make it look good on camera. At the end of the day, you're condensing an entire week's worth of footage into 42 minutes. If you can't make 42 minutes of footage look good, then you probably shouldn't be in that industry. Now, with regard to the workouts, a lot of the workouts that they made them do, first of all, the movements were way too complex for their abilities. There is this thing called isolation before integration. What that means is before you do these big complex movements, you want to make sure that the individual muscles are firing correctly and they're, they're able to utilize the muscles correctly before you get into these big bang exercises. If you go right into these multi-joint complex movements and you haven't built a solid foundation, it's very easy to get injured or it's very easy just to do it with improper form. So even if you're not getting injured, you're not gonna get maximum benefit because you're not doing it with proper form. If you're doing an exercise with proper form, you're recruiting the maximum number of muscles involved in that exercise. And by recruiting the maximum number of muscles, you're going to burn more calories, you're going to burn more fat. And when it comes to weight loss, if you burn more calories and more fat, you're going to notice a more significant weight loss throughout the duration of the program. None of that happened during the season of The Biggest Loser. That was just the workout. Overall, all of the workouts were pretty terrible. They made them do way more than they needed to. Generally, on The Biggest Loser, they make them work out three times a day. They restrict their calories where it is just ridiculously low. 
and it's not sustainable in the long term. With regard to the workouts, another problem that I have is the berating that went on during the workouts. You have four hours a day of this for four months. You better toughen up right now. 10 push-ups. Now, I'm not pro-berating, I'm not anti-berating. I am pro figuring out your client and then adjusting your method accordingly based off of who is in front of you. Just an example, me personally, when I train my clients, for the most part, I'm pretty bland and boring, I'm not gonna lie. I'm counting in my head, I don't count out loud, I don't yell anything motivational unless I see that they need it. If I am performing a set of an exercise, let's say I'm doing 10 repetitions with a client, the first seven, they're not struggling whatsoever. I'm just gonna sit there, I'm gonna watch them do it. As soon as I see that they start to struggle, then my voice will start to elevate, I'll start to give words of encouragement, but I'm not just gonna start yelling right off the bat because that's just not my style, that's not how I do things. The one time that I did do that, I'll kinda go back a few years into one of my training sessions. I did have one client that actually wanted me to berate him. He was a fighter and I remember we were doing an exercise and as I said, I don't really talk too much. If I notice that you're struggling, I'll give out words of encouragement, I'll raise my voice, I'll say, come on, you can do it, that type of stuff. But I'm not the type of person who will look at a client and say, pick up that weight, you little bitch. And that is exactly what this one particular client wanted me to do. So we were getting him ready for a fight and he wanted me just to berate him a little bit. And one of his chief complaints was that I didn't do that. So he told me, he's like, I want you to call me a little bitch. So he was doing a set of decline presses and he was, as he was doing it, I ended up calling him a little bitch, but I said it in just a very low tone voice and in the way that I would normally talk to my clients. It's not like I was really angry and fired up and calling him a little bitch. And as soon as I did that, he ended up dropping the weights and we both just passed out on the floor and started pissing ourselves. It was hilarious because that's not my style. If you want someone who's gonna yell at you and make fun of you, go to somebody else, that's not me. If you want somebody who's gonna write a really good program for you and motivate you when you need the motivation, then you come to me. That's my expertise. Now, back to the berating. One of the things that I absolutely hate about The Biggest Loser is the berating that goes on during the show. Do not make me repeat myself, Greg. You can only get off if you throw up. Start walking. A lot of the reason why people are scared to go to the gym is because of that type of stuff. That was really frightening, not only because I was concerned for Greg, but scared of what was gonna happen to me next. A lot of times people are afraid to hire a personal trainer or afraid to hire any type of fitness professional because they have this impression in their head that the trainer is just gonna yell at them, tell them that they suck, make fun of them, and that turns a lot of people off from attempting to go to the gym. And if your whole point is to motivate people to get into the gym and to lose weight, then why are you gonna yell at them and call them names and make fun of them? If they're the type of person where you've built a rapport with them and you know that that's the type of motivation that they need in order to get through the workout, then yes, fine, you can do that. If you are with somebody who already does not enjoy working out and they have self-esteem issues, then yelling at them and insulting them is the worst thing that you could possibly do because all you're gonna do is turn them off from working out. I guarantee you a decent portion of the contestants from The Biggest Loser, when they got home, they did not go back to the gym because they were afraid of being yelled at by other trainers. Now, if they had taken a different approach and motivated them without insulting them or without making them feel like crap, I'm sure that the success rate of the show would be a lot better than it currently is, which is almost zero. Almost every single contestant ends up putting on all the weight back. And that's because, aside from the berating, also the education on the show is just not very good. Back to the berating, I'll get to the education in a second, but back to the berating. I've seen a number of really terrible things go on on that show. One of them was Jillian Michaels, the one of the trainers on the show. I've seen her threaten to break people's bones. Greg, if you don't run, I will pull Alex on the floor and I will break every bone in his body. I've heard her say how proud she was to make people throw up. I don't know if Greg's proud of vomiting or not, but I'm proud that I made him vomit. And that's all that matters. I've still got it and also heard her say how much fun she has watching people suffer. We wanted to take the two biggest guys and crack them first. After you break him, you will establish dominance. If you are a trainer and you enjoy watching your clients suffer, you should quit and find a new job because that job is not for you. You should enjoy motivating people. You should enjoy watching people reap the benefits of the program that you wrote for them. Yes, sometimes there is going to be some suffering involved, but you should not enjoy watching people suffer. You should enjoy 
the benefit that comes from the suffering, but the suffering itself should not be enjoyable. If you do enjoy it, then you're a piece of crap and you should not be in this profession. Now, aside from the berating, another pet peeve of mine with the show is with regard to nutrition. Me personally, nutrition is huge with my clients. It's something that I harp on all the time. And one of the things with my clients is me personally, I practice intuitive eating with my clients. I don't really focus on calorie counting unless it's a severely overweight individual who needs to lower their weight for their health. If they need to lower their weight, then I will incorporate some calorie counting. But even then, I will not tell them to do that long term. Calorie counting is something that should be done short term, maybe for a month. Once you understand what calories are in the different foods that you eat, then intuitive eating is going to be preferable. But going back to the nutrition, just the education is terrible on that show. There's no real practical education. They'll give them a few little things here and there. They'll tell them, oh, you can look at this in the menu. But out in the real world, none of that is going to be applicable to them. Because when you're in a house and you're completely isolated from the outside world, yeah, sure, it's easy to say, oh, this food's really good, have that. And aside from the impractical nutrition advice, another pet peeve of mine is the shameful product placement that goes on in the show. Now, I get it. They need to get their ad revenue from these different companies. So they're going to promote different products, even if they're not the healthiest. But there's a way to do it without just completely selling out and giving out terrible advice. One more example from that one season that I did watch. I remember at one point they were trying to explain how you can still eat healthy and eat foods that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be terrible. And they gave them these yogurts. They were these red velvet cake yogurts. And this one girl ended up picking it up. They ended up asking her what she thought of it. And she looks right to the camera and goes, it tastes just like a red velvet cake. And she did one of those. And it was so obvious that they had re-shot that scene about 10 different times just to get her to turn it perfectly, smile perfectly, tell her everybody just how much it tastes like a red velvet cake. And it was just such shameful product placement. It was embarrassing. If you want to promote certain products, fine. I'm not against that. Do what you need to do to make some money if you need to do that in order to be on the air. However, you don't need to only do product placement. You could give good advice and then occasionally just toss in a product placement. But when you only focus on product placement and all of your nutrition advice is, oh, try this sugar-free yogurt. Oh, try this brand of this. You're not giving good advice. You should be giving actual advice that people can use. And while we're on the topic of nutrition, there was one time where Jillian Michaels, she ended up giving caffeine pills to the contestants on her team because the weigh-in was the next day and she wanted her contestants to lose as much weight as possible. And she did that without consulting the doctors on the show. So basically she wanted to win at all costs and in order to do that, she gave every single one of her contestants caffeine pills in order for them to lose weight. And the way that she justified it was she said that, oh, well, you know what? Caffeine pills is better than downing an entire pot of coffee. Well, why the hell are you gonna make them down an entire cup of coffee? How about you just teach them how to eat properly or give them a good program? Your options are not down an entire cup of coffee or down a handful of caffeine pills. There is something in between. It's called eat properly. And if you eat properly, you won't need to down a cup of coffee and you won't need to take caffeine pills. There are things you can do. It's not one or the other. Anyway, that's getting me a little hot under the collar, so I'm gonna move on to the next topic, which is going to be sustainability. One of the things with The Biggest Loser is if you've ever followed any of the contestants after the show, almost all of them have put all of the weight back on, and a good portion have put more weight back on from when they originally started. It is incredibly unsustainable to be able to do what they do. Some of the things that they do, and one of the reasons why it's unsustainable is because they make them train three times a day. They restrict their calories to under 2000. Some of them are on a 1200, 1800 calorie diet. And if you're 500 pounds and eating 1200 calories, that is ridiculously low. And I get it, it's a show. You wanna show a hundred pound weight loss in one month. If you did a 100 pound weight loss over the course of the year, people aren't gonna watch your show. So I get it, you're doing it to make it more entertaining. However, you can still educate people and say, look, this is not healthy to do this. We are doing this for entertainment purposes. Out in the real world, you're not gonna work out three times a day and you're not gonna restrict your calories to 1200 calories a day. It's just unsustainable. Now, if they had told the contestants that and said, oh, when you get home, don't work out three times a day. Start with 20 minutes a day, build up a tolerance to it. And when it comes to your nutrition, give them solid advice instead of just eat this many calories because 
Most people are not going to be able to follow that. Especially when you consider the fact that these people are all around four to 600 pounds. If you're four to 600 pounds, then the reason you got to that point is because you either don't know anything about nutrition and exercise, or you just don't care. And the fact that the people are there on the show means that they obviously do care. So them caring is not the problem. The problem is their education. They are not educated on proper nutrition and exercise. And this show is absolutely terrible for when it comes to educating people on proper nutrition and exercise. Another reason why it is so unsustainable is you are locked in an environment that is completely artificial. You have absolutely zero interaction with the outside world. Everything around you, all of the food that you need is inside the house that they stay in. They don't have any bad food available. Well, any bad food available. They do have a bunch of diet foods, which I'm not a big fan of, but it's not like they have chips on hand and they could just chow down whenever they want. They have certain foods in the house. When they go back home, they have family, they have work, they have bills, they have all these stressors in their lives. And to be able to manage all of those with working out, with nutrition, when they haven't been properly educated on nutrition and exercise is just unrealistic and it is a recipe for failure, which is why most of the contestants fail when they get back home. It is completely impractical in a real world setting. Yes, for entertainment purposes, you're doing a show, I get it, you wanna make it entertaining, but it is just impractical for the real world. And this is something that they should let people know when they are making their disclaimers. Instead of putting a warning, this might trigger you, how about a warning, don't follow the advice we're doing in this show because it's terrible. Make sure you actually educate yourself properly. That would be a better warning. But that's enough of my rant. In terms of my final thoughts, basically, do I think The Biggest Loser is good advice? No, it is terrible advice. Do I think it's good entertainment? Yeah, it's good entertainment. When I was watching it, even though I was horrified, I was also entertained at the same time because it was pretty entertaining to watch these people compete these challenges and to see them go through these different obstacles, not just the physical obstacles, but also the mental obstacles. From an entertainment standpoint, then yeah, it was entertaining, but it was absolutely terrible advice. I would not recommend doing the workouts that they do on the show. I would not recommend following the nutrition advice that they give out on the show. What I would recommend is if you are interested in losing weight and you're not really sure how to go about it, find out who are the best trainers in your area, do a little bit of research, see what their qualifications are, see what their results have been, and actually do your research. Don't just pick the first person that you see. 99% of people in gyms don't know what the hell they're doing. A lot of people, they'll get a cheap little three-day certification, think they know everything, and then they'll call themselves some type of specialist because that, that is what the certification labels them as, and the results are not gonna be that good. Be very diligent when researching who you hire. When you go to buy an ethernet cable, you end up researching for hours on a $20 cable, but people will spend thousands of dollars on just the first person that's assigned to them in a gym without doing their research. Please, I implore you, research before you hire somebody. Your health is incredibly important. You should not put it in the hands of just the first person that you come across. If you're not sure what certifications to look for, what credentials, you can go to my website, teamufork.com, click on the About Us. Every single course that I've taken, I have listed it, and every single course, if you click on the link, it will redirect you to the school's website. When you go to the school's website, you can find practitioners in your area. So if you can't train with me or you can't be coached by me, what you can do is go to my website, Go to those different sites and then you can find somebody in your area to take care of you. That way you're not just randomly picking some person that probably doesn't know what they're doing. You want to find somebody who is properly educated and the courses that I have listed on my website are very, very good and the practitioners that have taken those courses are very, very good and will get you to where you need to get. But that does it for my rant today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button so I know to make more of these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. That covers it for today's video and I will see you again tomorrow.